uh, Musioka and Honorable Moses Wetangula are against oath taking. The principals held talks for over five hours in Karen with Odinga maintaining that he must be sworn in on the 30th of January. Those are some of the reports that we are receiving and that meeting is set to continue today. Stephen Leto uh, tried to follow up with that meeting uh, that at one point was supposed to be at Capitol Hill but it ended up at the Karen Country Club and this is a report he filed last night. The meeting between the four principals was conducted in high secrecy. The summit choosing to hold the crisis talks at the current country club away from the public eye. Minutes before 5 p.m., Rilo Dinga's convoy drove off a signaling the end of the meeting. The sources have described as tense and inconclusive. The high level of secrecy exhibited by both the principals and their handlers, a clear indication that all was not well within the coalition. Between 1 p.m. and 2.30 p.m., Waipa leader Kalonzo Msioka hosted Ford Kenya leader Moses Wetangula and his ANC counterpart Musalia Mudavadi at his current residence. Multiple sources told Citizen TV that during the meeting, the three principals sought to take a common stand against the plan swearing in, a position that will isolate Odinga were they to take a vote on the matter. Musioka and Wetangula are said to have been firmly against the Odinga oath-taking, while Mudavadi was non-committal on the matter. All the three met, Odinga was waiting for the confirmation of the venue that was shifted to two different places before settling on the current country club. Siku ya jumatatu, tuko na mkutano, weta, Raila, Kalonzo na Mudavati. Yale tutasungumuza, tutawambi. Sources have further revealed that the principals discussed the merits and demerits of the Rilo Odinga and Kalonzo Musioka inauguration. The Odinga side wary of a possible backlash from supporters should they call off the inauguration for a second time. Odinga's camp yet to settle on an alternative route that will appease supporters and sustain the anti-jubilee rhetoric. <laughs> Talks were, however, inconclusive, with the principals giving themselves one more day to deliberate on the matter. The talks continue on Tuesday. The friction over the sharing of slots in Parliament was also on the table, with Odinga being tasked to engage his ODM party to relinquish one slot from the Parliamentary Service Commission in favor of Waipa Party. The two slots went to ODM's Aisha Jumwa and Homa Bay Woman Representative Gladys Wanga, as well as Vihiga Senator George Haniri. But the Orange Party claims it has over 60% of the coalition seats in Parliament and therefore deserves more slots. <laughs> TV, Nairobi. Well, joining us in studio to talk a little bit about today's proposed uh, NASA principals meeting and what happened yesterday is lawyer and member of parliament for Nyando, Jared Okello, together with David Osiani, who is a public policy expert and political analyst as well. Welcome to the program, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Let me start with you, Honorable Okello, and get your thoughts on the same. Many times media is accused of reading too much into maybe something that wasn't there and, and, and you know, putting our own facts together and so forth. Yesterday's meeting, for all intents and purposes, looks like it ended in a stalemate. Can you confirm or deny that? Uh, and then, you know, let us know your thoughts on the same. Well, thank you so much, my brother Wahiga. Nice to see you in 2018. And together. Happy New Year to you too. Happy New Year together with the Citizens uh, Fraternity. Uh, my heart firstly goes out to the Kiambu tragedy uh, victims. Uh, I'm, I'm, my heart is in prayers with their family and friends. And I hope that God in his... A uh, good dosage will be able to heal them from this kind of uh, trouble that met them this morning. So we are praying with them as a nation, we are praying with them as NASA coalition. Now coming back to your question as regards the perceived fallout from yesterday's meeting, it is true that we have had a series of discussions pertaining to the impending swearing in scheduled for 30th of January which is coming up in exactly two weeks. Uh, when issues of logistics are being handled, uh, particularly with an issue with such great, greater volatility as swearing in, 
uh, the people are bound to disagree on certain elements. NASA is a coalition of various political parties and organizations and even within the parties themselves, uh, forget about the apex which stands as, uh, as NASA coalition, you, you are bound to have people disagreeing on several issues. Uh, when you come to NASA as a coalition, there are intra-political parties and intra-coalition mm -hmm. disagreements, which uh, have certain times potential to create a, a rift. Uh, amongst the coalition partners. You, al allow, allow me to interrupt you there. You talk about logistics, making it sound like the issue is not January 30th, the issue is how to make it happen. But from the reports we are receiving, we are receiving it does appear that some of the principals are against a swearing in at all. Is that correct? The, the meeting that was convened yesterday, uh, as a matter of fact, with uh, all intent and purposes, didn't envisage a situation where the press a presence was to be, uh, to, to, to be in place and that is why we kept on shifting uh, you know the venue for the meetings in a bid to also divert uh, interest from the public and that of the media in particular. Now how media came to find out that uh, we were based at the current country club uh, is still a, mi a mystery to us. It is our job to find out. <laughs> <laughs> on that you did a good job. But again, even after the meeting, we had not planned to, you know, appraise the nation on the degree of our talks and the levels at which uh, the preparations for the swearing-in uh, have reached. So can you deny that there is a split in terms of the thinking of the four principles that some are for the swearing-in and others are against? <clears throat> not any that is within our coalition, but we have seen that within the press. I can comfortably say that the meeting was convened yesterday with all the principals. A follow-up meeting is scheduled for today, uh, and that is a testament that really there is nothing uh, in the degree of a, uh, of a disagreement that has the potential to either vacate the 30th uh, date for swearing in, or any that has the uh, you know. Uh, the, 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 the hallmarks of creating a great division within NASA coalition. Okay. I can only confirm yes. that we are as united as before. The plans are underway to have the swearing in in place on the 30th of, August, uh, of January. And uh, really there is nothing to worry about. Okay, let me bring in David Oseni now to react to, of course, that report by Stephen Leto and mm. the inner workings of the NASA coalition, specifically with the principles that as of now we may not have all the details to. Uh, David can come in. Yeah, well, uh, foremost at, this, at the risk of sounding repetitive, I, my heart goes out to the Kiambu family too. You know, that was quite sad. It's unfortunate and we hope uh, that their families and their close ones are able to find peace and repose in the Lord. Mm. But that said, uh, NASA as a coalition seems to be at this point. Uh, Stephen Leto foremost agrees in his report that uh, the meeting was for the principals only. My assumption therefore is should there have been any wind of information it must be from one of the principals which I don't foresee unless it's the political games which is possible. Now you must understand the context here. The context being that all the four gentlemen are prospectively looking at the presidency at some point in their lives. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the very immediate, in the very immediate future, uh, you know, the former right honorable Prime Minister Raila Odinga hopes to be president. Uh, Kalonzo Wetangula and even uh, Musalia Mudavadi mm -hmm. hope to lead this nation at some point. And so it is very likely that there would be actions taken to feed that selfish standpoint for each of them. Now, what seems to be happening, if I were to borrow from what Leto has said, is Leto is pointing to three versus one. I wouldn't be quick to neither confirm nor deny. I mean, Jared would do that. He's, the, he's on that side of the political end, and he, he's, he may understand better the inner workings. However, as I said before, uh, you know, Wahiga, whenever Raila Odinga has intimated that he wants to be sworn in, I have clarified that you must understand that symbolism is one of the most powerful you know, ways of communication. When Raila says, I will be sworn in, 
I am almost certain that the former prime minister is no is is not under any illusion that he would take the state power. Far from it. He understands that in terms of state power and machinery ownership, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta may have that. What he's trying to do is to rally and coalesce his support base mm -hmm. around something different. That if this is it and we are not given space, then let us try and run our own show. What that then does is it leads to the breakdown of a nation, which is the reason President Uhuru Kenyatta must climb down, as I have said before, and try to engage with him. I am happy that the U.S. and the U.K. and Germany and the clergy mm -hmm. are trying to get a middle ground for both because we have a lot of calm. I am uncertain we have a lot of peace. If recent incidences like chasing away you know, Eugene Wamalo are in parts of the country is anything to go by. Parts of the country that were not volatile during the post-election skirmishes, all right? So when you have such things happening, it is a call, a call to the person who has the greatest and higher most responsibility, who is President Uhuru Kenyatta, to sit down and say, hey, gentlemen, let's figure this out. What do you want? Listen to what they say. I bet what the NASA coalition is proposing makes a lot of sense. Let's have electoral reform so that we are assured that any elections, any subsequent elections will count for something. Because for them, they hold the standpoint and view that the previous elections done on the 8th mm -hmm. were not free and fair. And they did not get involved in the 26th election, which means for them the 26th election is nothing to even talk about. So. If these wranglings continue, it would be unfortunate if they do, because for them to achieve anything, they must be able to rally together. Okay. So if one group uh, within them, you know, splits away and says, no, we are not going to be party to it, then it may well be a forgotten cause. I'd like to get a reaction from uh, Honorable Kelo on the same, and also find out from you, we've seen a situation where uh, President Uru Kenyatta in the process of forming his cabinet, what we have is a partial list right now. Mm -hmm. Some legislator from NASA saying we're not even going to talk about the cabinet because we don't, uh, we don't recognize this government. But over the weekend we saw, for example, Honorable Wetangula appealing to the president uh, to pick people from you know, all regions, make it an all-inclusive cabinet, making it look like certain sections of NASA yeah. are speaking with different voices. One side saying, wait a minute, we are not even going to talk about the cabinet. But another side saying, there is a cabinet, please pick people from... XYZ regions as well. Does that not show your followers that slowly but surely some cracks are appearing within the NASA coalition, Honorable Kello? Well, uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have, uh, as a nation, noted a lot of discord, uh, particularly those pertaining to our economic endowment and economic progress. This kind of standoff that has been in place since the August 8th is um, is what has created all this acrimony and all the troubles and problems we perennially experience as a nation what nasa is saying and my brother has alluded to uh, the intent to carry out some dialogue what we are saying is that dialogue is good so that the country can move towards the same direction left unattended this country is headed to the abyss of annihilation on all fronts and we are saying therefore that this is the time that we came together as a nation address issues bede bedeviling uh, the country so that together we can move on and what we are saying therefore is that one of the fundamental subjects that must form part of that structured dialogue is electoral justice we have seen three terms in a row, every electoral cycle. Having come out of any election, there is always uh, friction. That is a creation of a bungled election since uh, the year 2007. So if every election Kenya is going to have this kind of tension, we are saying we cannot live like that. We must be rest assured that when we cast our votes at the ballot, it will be properly counted and election victors shall be announced. Without which, therefore, we have to then bear the brunt of uh, uh, friction 
and fragmentation of, of the Republic of Kenya. So uh, I, I heard about uh, one of the principals, Honorable Wetangula, saying that you know if uh, Uhuru Kenyatta would be crafting his cabinet, then it should all be uh, inclusive. We, now, we've also heard of night meetings. Yes. With, with some certain principles, uh, night meetings with the Jubilee <coughs> legislators or Jubilee linked individuals as well. Well, th th those are in the air, but there is no cogent evidence to back up uh, those kinds of claims. Okay. So I will not delve uh, into them. But what I'm saying is that now as a coalition, one of the tenets of our success uh, uh, is derived from democracy where people would speak their minds as and when they deem necessary and fit. Uh, unlike uh, in Jubilee where you have a one-man guitar uh, played by one Uhuru Kenyatta and any divergent view, anything to the contrary, uh, you know, invites a wrath of, the, 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 of, of State House. So uh, in, uh, in NASA we are as democratic as is expected by the Kenyan people. Um, Honorable Moses Wetangula has a latitude to parade his thoughts in the best way possible, but that is not the position of NASA coalition. And that is why the meetings that they have carried out and those that are yet to happen, including today, are meant to, you know, look at holistic approach to this, I know, volatile issue of uh, impending swearing in. But we are ready to bite the bullet to get the country out of the morass of this kind of discord it is talk, talk, talk to us moment. a little bit about today's mm -hmm. meeting what what can you tell us can we expect to get a comprehensive uh, way forward sort of statement after today's meeting i i believe uh, a statement shall be forthcoming today uh, today to yesterday as uh, brother leto did indicate they were not able to accomplish all the pieces of agenda that were put on the table so we do expect, therefore, that today, having clarified on issues that were left pending yesterday, they would be able to communicate to the nation. The country is pregnant with expectation, and we therefore hope that uh, this kind of, you know, the wait and see will be put to rest uh, this evening. A communique shall be uh, delivered to the media. Okay. So, so that they can uh, uh, appraise the nation on the levels of preparedness and any other issue that could be uh, pending uh, within the works. Uh, David Osiani, do you expect to see NASA giving uh, sort of like you know, guidelines about the friction that we've seen in Parliament, the jostle over committee seats? Do you think uh, that that could be resolved even today? <laughs> You know, uh, Wahiga, <laughs> Your laugh is, the uh, country... Be betraying. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, country, the country is definitely careening to a not-so-good, you know, destiny. Someone must not, not everyone. Not everyone sees that, uh, David. Not everyone, not everyone sees that, but that's what it is, whether they see it or not. You see, if a rock is coming down and the building has cracks, the person who doesn't see it, that's up to the person. Okay, now, fair enough. This Carry is on. it. Mm -hmm. The, you, you earlier put a question to, to Jared concerning uh, Moses Wetangula trying to you know, put word out there, appoint some of the people from this region, and that uh, may be, I mean, as you may have intimated, uh, at a different standpoint. But that then is an assumption that NASA does not want any of its people appointed to government ranks to serve the nation. And I think that is not as clear as it gets. I haven't heard from NASA trying to say, you know what, you can't do this. Because that's a service to the nation. I have one of, I've been one of the proponents who have called the president to stand up and call the bluff of NASA and say, you know guys, I am committed to it. But even as he does that and makes appointments of his nemesis, because you can appoint your cronies when you appoint your enemy to come and work alongside you, as Mandela did with the Butelez in South Africa to try and move the country forward, that must not get your focus off the other issues being raised by that coalition. Because there are issues of import to the nation for the days to come. Now, when we're talking about electoral reforms, for example, and there are legitimate proposals that NASA could be bringing to the table, this will only but save the country the future much more for himself it would be a legacy left behind that after years of troubling uh, elections in this country 
A president came in to fix it before he left office so that he saves the generations to come mm -hmm. from an impending apocalypse, if you may say. Because elections are very extremely emotive issues in this country. And not here alone. They are world over. It's the choice of who you think stands the chance of transforming lives at that point in time. Now, when elections are done agreeably, then the society doesn't remain fragmented even though they may differ in opinion. So, do I, do I think that it is not a bad idea to call... I mean, when you get your enemy to sit down, it becomes very awkward. But don't just let him sit there. When you invite other people, the way Obama did with Republicans, he appointed a fair number of Republicans because he said, you know what, if you think your standpoint is better, come. Let's but sit but, but, and show me uh -huh. how that's different from what we want to do. But wouldn't you also say that the dominant party in NASA, that's ODM, should also show the same action that you're calling for President Uhuru Kenyatta most, to do most. by relinquishing some of the slots that they hold in Parliament to allow the other parties within the coalition to also feel can I explain that? Wanted? Welcome. Go ahead, <laughs> Honorable Okello. Well, thank you very much. Uh, let me delve into this issue of uh, committee, uh, committees. Because it is a key issue. Because yeah. it is a key issue. Yeah. Now, uh, at the very outset, I would want everybody to understand that there are only four committees by the dictates of the Constitution together the Standing Orders of Parliament that can be chaired by the minority uh, in Parliament. Uh, and, and these committees are number one, Public Accounts Committee, number two, Public mm -hmm. Investments Committee, mm -hmm. number three, Special Funds Committee, and the Implementation Committee. Only four of them. Now, because Jubilee is the majority at the moment in Parliament, they tend therefore to have more representation in all committees. Out of 19 members, uh, Jubilee enjoys 11. Uh, and, and, and the remainder goes to the, uh, the minority. And each time somebody presents his candidate for any position, either chairmanship or vice, you must therefore, in retrospect, mop up and whip members to vote for you. That's right. And, and that is exactly what happens. It is democracy and people therefore have to, you know, reach across the aisle in order for them to be elected. So it is true that um, in those particular committees that are chaired by the minority, various people drawn from various political parties within the NASA coalition presented their various candidatures. At the end of the day, the voters who are members of parliament would carry the day. And therefore we see, you know, somebody like my brother Honorable Wandai chairing uh, PSE. Uh, and, and, and like that. So what Pandai did, basically, was to go out and reach, mm -hmm. uh, not just within NASA coalition, but across the aisle in Jubilee for people to vote for him. And that has been the picture all through the uh, four uh, various committees that are chaired by the minority. So I, I, I think, therefore, it would be, you know, a travesty to sit back and start blaming ODM for their words to reach out to the enemy and vote for their members uh, who presented their candidates and candidates. So Wiper should have gone slow on their press conference, I think, which they held last week on Wednesday. What they ought to have done was to, because I know they had uh, people who were participating in those elections, uh, it behoved all of them, therefore, to move out and reach uh, these members of parliament to vote for them. Uh, so th th that is the position. Uh, how I wish that we would, uh, you know, retrace history uh, and try to do things differently. Now you talked about the Parliamentary Service Commission. Now, political coalition or pa coalition parties would present names mm -hmm. of those who sit at the PSC. Now Jubilee brought its uh, names of its members. Uh, NASA also presented a list of three. That's right. Uh, according to the standing orders. But, you know, there was a, a stalemate from both divides. A jubilee was in total disagreement with the people who were presented in Parliament to represent their interests at the Parliamentary Service Commission. And there were little mamas also on the side of NASA coalition. And therefore, uh, the, the old exercise was vacated to a later date. Okay. So at the moment, we do not have substantive members of Parliamentary Service Commission. Yes. There's one from ANC uh, who will then represent PSC members at the Senate mm -hmm. uh, in the name of Honorable George Haniri. 
and two from NASA coalition, Honorable Gladys Wanga and uh, uh, and and John, uh, what's her name? Aisha Jumwa. Aisha Jumwa. That's Aisha right. Jumwa. Yes. Oh. So, f f going by that, therefore, Briefly. you can see mm -hmm. a two to one, and just as somebody has properly alluded, uh, ODM controls. 65% of its membership within NASA coalition. So it's only fair so that. If, if numerically speaking, therefore, we need therefore to get two thirds out of three, and that is exactly what we have done. Fair enough. I, I, I need to get a yes or no answer from you. You have been on record saying that if NASA leader Raila Odinga is not sworn in, you will resign. Is that still the case? That is still the case. Thank I, you. I, uh, I did that, and I talked to the NASA principal, uh, Honorable Raila Odinga, and he did indicate to me unequivocally that he is carrying the Bible on the 30th. Therefore, I have no reason to go. But if anything okay. would change, therefore, I'm heading home. You are we, heading home. For okay. the record. David Ossian, I can allow you to put in a final word. No, I'm only saying um, ODM, as the member of parliament, Fonyanda Jared, indicates, fine, they have a 65 or 60 percent stake. But building a union <laughs> takes more than just having the majority. Mm. Sometimes it takes making sacrifices. Magnanim. That is what we have called, you know, time and again reminded Jubilee. Never abuse your tyranny. Your tyranny must always take into consideration that there are other people who may have legitimate reason. For the sake of union, occasionally you must make, you know, some sacrifices. So just the same way we have been on record to tell Jubilee, then the bigger brother, ODM, and yes, you know, I mean, I'm a life member of ODM, but if this is it, then you people as ODM must also make that sacrifice. If you're going to build a concerted union, if NASA is going to stand a chance of getting together, being glued, then that must be the case. You, don't, you know, you don't sweep and mop up everything yes you have the right to that it's a right you have the right to but there are moments when you have to cede your rights for the sake of the others but that said i am hoping that the talks around moving the country forward and building a future for the nation will you know get will be fruitful before the 30th so that the country can move forward because if it doesn't you have uh, the former Prime Minister Ray Loading. You know, he's battle hardened. What is it you will do to him? If he decided to go swear for the swearing in, he will. Will he have a massive following? Of course, almost half of the country. Will the, I mean, if possibly a few others would say, we are not going to support his standpoint. Mm -hmm. Even then, he enjoys support in some of the backyards of some of the principals more than the principals themselves may enjoy. So what's it that would best work for the country? Mediation and coming to a middle ground between him and President Uhuru Kenyatta so that we can move the country forward. If Thank not, if both of them take their two standpoints, I can almost but guarantee you we are headed for a stalemate and a deadlock. And that is not what this country need. Thank needs. You. It's not good for its economy. It's mm -hmm. not good for its politics. It's not good socially for this country at this point. Thank you, David Hussaini. I think I'll leave you with that last word. Thank you. Uh, and of course, your call to all the big players, whether the big players in NASA to be magnanimous, and of course, uh, for Jubilee, who has majority uh, in, you, know, across, you know, across the country in all aspects, also to be magnanimous in how they conduct themselves. That's how we wind up this discussion. Uh, lawyer and Member of Parliament for Nyando, Honorable Jared Okello, thank you so much for being here with us. You're and welcome. David Oceanic, Public Policy Expert and also a political analyst for finding time to be here with us as well. Thank you. Well, we wind up the English edition of Citizen Extra by telling you a little bit about what's happening on the global front.